sometimes the best tips are the most obvious ones, the ones that you're like, that are no brainers, but sometimes they're just so simple that you just never notice the best solutions for your problem. So that's what this video is going to try to aim to accomplish is to give you three simple tips in the off chance that you haven't thought of something like this before to give you a little bit extra money in your pocket. So this is primarily for hourly, hourly workers, um, but feel free anybody to use this. So my three tips for working hourly is number one, uh, if you are an hourly worker, try to clock in five minutes early and leave five minutes late. I know it's it's annoying. You want to get out of there. You want to you hate coming to work early. Your job sucks. Your your coworker sucks. Your bosses suck. Everything sucks. But if you do manage to get into the routine of coming in five minutes early and leaving five minutes late, you should tack up and you don't get in trouble from your boss for the overtime without permission. I know some companies are like that. They overtime shark or they clock shark and stuff. But if you can do it, you should do it because it's not a big uh, habit to to implement. And if you do, you will get 10 minutes of overtime a day, which 10 times five is 50 minutes a week. And 50 times 52 is 2,500 minutes or 2,600 minutes. And that turns into 43.3 hours a year, but they are overtime. So it is actually 60 five hours. So if you're making $15 an hour, uh, let's say Walmart, that's an extra $1,000 gross a year, which may not seem like much, but in the long run, that's a lot of extra money. You never know. And it scales up. You know, if you, if you get into the habit of doing it and then you make $16 an hour, $17 an hour, $18 an hour, so on and so forth. It's little things like this added up over a long period of time, which turns into uh, a lot of extra uh, spending power. Uh, just little, little things like this add up, you know, a little debt can add up credit card debt, you know, spend a little bit here. You know what I mean? It, it works the other way too. It's just not as uh quickly <laughs> yeah, bad things can pile up a lot faster than uh, good things. Uh, so tip number two is um, not doing a lot of overtime up front. work into it uh, progressively, kind of like a workout routine. You wouldn't just start off your workout routine if you've never benched 400 pounds before trying to bench 400 pounds. You would start with what you can do at a comfortable weight and then work up over a long period of time to work up to your goal. So then I propose you also do that for overtime because I did this personally. And now I uh, work two extra, just as a normal routine. Don't really notice it. Doesn't really affect my day too much. Um, I work two extra hours Monday and then one extra hour of overtime the rest of the week. So that is... Yeah, six hours a week of overtime, and it turns into. Yeah, make sure I did that right. <laughs> Do the wrong math now. Six times 52, 312 hours a year. So for overtime hours, that is 468 hours a year of overtime. So if I was only making $15 an hour, I would be grossing an extra $7,000 a year. So then. Based on, I just do times 0.2 because my take home is uh, claim zero. So t times 0.2 gets me pretty close. It overestimates taxes and all the other uh, benefits and stuff that I get pulled out of my paycheck. I'd be taking home an extra $4,352 a year if I only made $15 an hour. And that would scale up quite dramatically. So then it moves us on to tip number three, which is trying to convert commute time to overtime. So I know this, one, this one's a little out there. That's why it's number three. It's not like a big crazy great tip but say you live 30 minutes away from your job um and i know this is impossible for everybody but if you live 30 minutes away from your job you are essentially leaving 60 hours or 60 minutes on the table so if you were somehow able to like if you're one town a town b town b's got an apartment for sale or open maybe try moving to the town so that you can cut your commute down to 10 minutes and then since you already have the routine of getting up and setting up and getting ready it would be an easy transition to convert that extra 40 minutes into overtime. But if you don't even have the option for overtime, extra 40 minutes a day, it sounds like a lot of extra free time for you to uh, do whatever you want. Maybe stay up 40 minutes later and just get to watch another episode of your favorite anime or favorite TV show or whatever you're doing. So that's just that. And then, you know, real quick, I think this is kind of short. Yes, it's pretty short. So I'll just add one more. I've been thinking about it a little bit. <laughs> I've never really done it myself, but I, I kind of thought it was a, a good deal, a good idea hypothetically. And that is um, a ride share like business, kind of like 
talking to your coworkers, kind of getting to know them, and then who lives in a remote, like an area near you because you have a car, and that car can hold five people, and so you could utilize one to four extra seats depending on most cars. So that's potentially one to four people that you could be taking to work and bringing home from work. Uh, this kind of runs in the face of uh, number three, but uh, if you were to maybe set up some sort of subscription service, maybe ten dollars a week uh, or twenty dollars a week. It sounds like a pretty big, I think 20, 20 to 40 sounds like about right. Not a week, sorry. Uh, $20 a week might be on the high end. But if you take that times four, that's an extra $80 a week. And that's, that's after taxes, an extra $80 a week is like, uh, what is that? Like a $3 raise, $3 raise. And, you know, it could turn into a side business. Maybe you can get a van and just like put more people into your van. So <laughs> just kidding but i mean you never know so yeah hopefully you know these tips nothing crazy nothing fancy i'm not saying like this is gonna like change your life it, but it it, 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 may, it may be a start okay and once you start there's this thing called healthy user bias that i was watching during a debate and there's a, this thing they've noticed that people who tend to try to make good decisions they develop a bias to keep compounding and trying to make more and better decisions so maybe even utilizing that concept healthy user bias uh into this productivity hacks, life tips or something like that may, you know, compound that effect. So hopefully this, you know, helped out somebody or if it didn't, whatever, you know, I just figured I'd give it a shot, try to put some content out there that like helps people out. If not, whatever. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a nice day and see you later.